Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video I wanted to share with you a really fast and easy technique to create custom drum kits inside of Cubase using the sampler track. Cubase 11 brought a lot of new features, but one of the most significant overhauls was to the sampler track, which now extends well beyond being just a general sampler utility. So in this video, we're going to be taking advantage of a couple of these new features using loops we can find right inside of the Cubase stock library to create custom drum kits in a matter of seconds. This is the example project we'll be walking through today, and if you want to follow along with this project, you can actually find the drum loop we'll be using inside of the loops and samples. This is part of the new Hard Knocks library, so it's in the lo-fi drum folder here, so hip-hop and lo-fi drum loops, and you'll be able to find it right here. So, this original loop sounds like this. And that's all well and good, but for the beat I was working on, it doesn't really fit, because if we play that along with it, let's just back things up here and tempo warp this to fit along with the beat, you'll hear that it kind of sticks out weird. The beat sounds like this at the moment. So kind of a dark, modern R&B sort of thing, and if we bring this drum loop in, it has a cool character that might fit with that lo-fi kind of crunchy crusty feel but the loop itself not really gonna work and even if we stretch this to halftime it just doesn't quite fit but what we can do is take this loop and bring it into the new sampler track and cut it up to make a custom drum kit once this process is all said and done, we can take that basic drum loop and turn it into this drum kit. Which then fits in with this track much better. So let's break down how you can do this yourself. This whole process is incredibly straightforward, so I've added a new sampler track, and I've just called that Drum Kit. Then we're going to take our loop or whatever we want to chop up and drag it onto the sampler track here. Right now this is set to C3 as the root, and if we hold that down, as you would expect, it's going to scroll through the sample, and I can't play back the individual drums, I just have to hold the key, and I'm going to get the loop, and I can speed it up by going higher, and I can slow it down by going lower which is the way sampler track has always worked. But there's kind of a cool new twist on this that makes it a lot more useful for quickly creating drum kits. Down here in this blue section, you'll see the options for normal, audio warp, and slice. And if we go to slice, you'll see that we get these little markers, meaning that Cubase has automatically sliced all of these up into individual pieces. And now if we look down at the keyboard here, we see that we have individual keys mapped to these slices. So if we play C3, we'll get our kick. If we play here, we'll get an open hi-hat. If we play here, we get kind of a closed hat here, we've got this snare, and so on. You get that these slices respond to keys down below. So we've now created a custom drum kit in like two seconds. That was the exact same process I used for the final kit here. I just used a couple of other features that I'll walk you through. First off, we can use the pitch to tune the drum kit. So originally, if we play it back without any tuning, we'll get rid of that filter. It sounds a lot like the original loop, but I wanted things to maybe feel a bit dirtier and aged. So what I did is pitch this down just a couple of semitones. So this allows me to tune down the entire drum kit and it gives me a bit of a darker worn in feel. Another great feature is the filter of sampler track. So if we set this to the standard, which is the low pass 24, we can actually use this to create global filter sweeps because this filter applies to all of the drums. So if we play through this loop, let's say at the end of the phrase, we wanna cut it off a little bit. On the inverse of that, we can maybe do a really resonant high pass sweep. bring it back up. And I think you get the idea. In this case, what I did is use low pass six, which is a really, really, really gentle filter with just a touch of resonance and backed it off just to add a bit more of a lo-fi quality. It's subtle, but once you bring it in, 
We shave off some of that vinyl crunch and some of the airier bits to get more of a tight, deep kit. One other great technique is to use the filter drive. So if we bring this in, we can get a really hard hitting drum sound just to make it cut through the mix a bit. So I've just got this around 30% or so, and there are different drive modes you can experiment with as well. So we could go into clipping mode, which will give us more of a modern hard trap, hard clipped sound. Which might work well. We could just use maybe rate reduction. Get more of a lo-fi kit. So I think we'll just leave this on clip. And that'll give us a nice punchy sound. So let's talk about quickly enhancing your drum kits using just a couple built-in plugins because this is pretty good on its own, but we can take it up a notch with some basic processing. First off, one of my favorite techniques is adding a bit crusher. So I've got this set up here with the sample divider on two and on mode four. This is really, really subtle, but you hear it adds a little bit of aliasing hiss to the top. And if we divide further, becomes a lot more apparent. One of the things with dividing samples and bit crushing too is you're actually reducing the overall dynamic range. So in a weird kind of backwards way, it's a form of compression. So if we reduce the bit depth a little bit, maybe to like 10 bits, because the less bits, the less dynamic range we have, we get this really chunky sound. So we could blend this in just to enhance that kind of clipped feel a bit more. Let's back off the sample divider. And that's a really easy way to make your drum kits hit a little bit harder. Next up, I had a destroyer here. This is a relatively new plugin to Cubase, but this is a really fun distortion. I actually just used this at the default settings, I believe. The only thing I adjusted was the shell frequency and the tone. And then just mix this into taste. So if we bring it in all the way, that's a bit much. But it does add a really nice aggressive bark to the snare. So we'll just blend this into taste. And we've got a nice, crunchy, heavy, hard-hitting drum kit. With all that done, I think the last remaining thing to do was add just a bit of EQ. So before, things sound pretty good, but I think we could make the snare pop a little bit. The kick could be a little bit deeper and heavier, and I think it could use just a bit of sparkle up top. So I brought in a really basic frequency setting here. I just brought up the fundamental of the kick because frequency also acts as a really handy spectrum analyzer so I can quickly determine where things are happening in the overall mix. So here, I found that the snare had a nice overtone at right about maybe 600 or so hertz, brought that up just a tiny bit, and then just brought up some air just by hunting for where the hi-hat kind of had that nice clacky feel to it. So right about there, and just backed it off a bit. And just that little bit of extra processing can take kind of a flat kit and really make it jump up and stand out in the mix. So before we have all that processing, we've got this. And after. And it's really that simple to create custom drum kits in Cubase using the new sampler track. I think this is particularly useful when you have a new loop library or the built-in library of Cubase or some samples you've got yourself where it's actually a loop rather than individual hits because you can quickly cut it up and create a drum kit that you can play back with whatever rhythm and flavor you want, add some processing, quickly add some filter drive, pitch it around and manipulate it without a lot of really tedious efforts. A very fast way to tweak a drum kit and make it fit your track. And that wraps everything up for this one. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. For more information on Cubase, you can visit steinberg.net. And for more tutorials just like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below.